So now in this video, we'll talk about operators. So just to demonstrate that, let me create a class called as operator demo and in, with, in which we'll be having a main, main method here. How do you create, how do you use operators, different operators? So basically we have different types of operators here. Let me use a multiline comment to show you that. So this is a multiline comment because whatever I write here, I don't want to execute that. That's why, that's how we use, uh, that's why we use comments in Java. Let me use some types of operators. First operator we are going to talk about is arithmetic operator. That's the first thing. Then we'll talk about bitwise operator to relational operators, logical operators. So basically we have these four types of operator which you have to work with. So we got arithmetic, bitwise, relational and logical. Uh, so we cannot complete all this, all this stuff in one video. We'll try to make uh, two videos of it. So let's start with arithmetic. Other than this, we have some more operators. Inside these operators, we have some lots of operators. We'll not, we'll, we'll not cover everything, but we'll cover those things which are normally used. What we'll do is we'll start with arithmetic. Now what exactly arithmetic operators are? So basically when you talk about plus operator, then we have subtraction operator. So we have multiplication operator, then we have division operator. We also have a modulus operator here to work with. So basically we have these five operations to work with. We have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and the modulus operator. So what we'll do is we'll take we'll create two variables. One is m and n. So we got these two variables. Let's assign the value for m as 6 and n as 2. We can create some multiple variables here. We can say r1, which is m plus n, which is which is addition of this two. That's your addition operator there. We can create r2, which is subtraction operator, which is m minus n. So that's how we can uh, we can add and we can subtract. We can create R3, which is M multiplied by N, and we can create R4. So we got four variables here, which is M divided by N. And let's print all these values here. We'll say system.out.println. Let's print R1. So that's the first operator we have. Let me just copy this code and paste it here, here, and here. This is R2, R3, R4. So we got these operations here, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And let's run this code. So before running the code, let me just uh, find out what the output we're expecting here. So the output we're expecting is, is 8, then 4, this should be 12, we're expecting 3, right? So the division should be 3 here. And now if I run this code, this is the output we're expecting and we got, and we got the same output, right? Which we are expecting, that means that's how your operators work. So we use division operator here. But the thing is, what if I change my value of n to 4? Now if you say 6 plus 4 will be getting 10, 6 minus 4 will be getting 2, 6 into 4 will get 24, but this one, this one should be 1.5, right? And if I run this code, you have not got 1.5, but you're getting only 1. Why is that? Because this division operator here will always give you the quotient. It will not give you the decimal values, it will give you only the quotient part. How do you get the decimal part? So what we can do is, first of all, we are using int here, we, we have to change it to double. Right, and if I run this code now, still we are getting 1.0, we should be getting 1.5, right? The thing is, this thing here, which is m uh, divided by n, is giving you integer. Let's make it double. Let's cast it with double. Let's try to work with that. And so when you cast it with double, we got 1.5. Okay, so by default, the division operator gives you uh, integer, and you have to cast it with double. Now let's say I don't want the quotient, I want the remainder. So when I say five, uh, 6 divided by 4, I'll be getting the quotient as 1 and the remainder as 2, right? So if you want only the remainder part, we can use m mod n because mod gives you the remainder. And if I, if I print, if I print r5 now, we'll be getting 2, which is the remainder of this 2. And you can see we got 2. So that's how we use arithmetic operator here. So we got plus, minus, multiplication, division, and per, and this modulus symbol. So modulus is used to find the remainder in the division. So now what we'll do is we'll try to find some, uh, there are some shortcuts you have to remember. Now when it comes to arithmetic, uh, we have, uh, let's say we have a variable n, and let, let's say the value of n is uh, 5, and then we have m, the value of m is 4. Now we can add we can add m with n. So we can say the new value of n is equal to n plus m. So the new value of n is the addition of m plus n and let's print the value of it. So let me let me just print the value of n now. And of course when you print the value of n, the value would be 9, right? Because that's the addition of m and n. Quite simple, right? 
Now the thing is, if you say you are adding these two values or you're putting these two characters here, right, n, n, n. So when you have this name repeated here, you can actually use a shortcut. So we can say, instead of saying you have to add n plus m and straight, straight to n, we can also use a shorthand operator which says n plus equal to m, which is, act, which is, which is same as n equal to n plus m. So this stuff here is as is same as this one. And now if you run this code, you can see we still we are still getting 9. Now let's say if you're not you don't want to add by m, you want to add it by 3, even this will work now. So you can use 8. And if you say let's say 1, and you can write this. Now instead of writing 1, you can also write n plus plus. Now n plus plus is same as this this statement, and which is same as this statement. I mean if you have n plus 1. So n plus plus is same as n plus equal to 1 and n equal to n plus 1. So you are just incrementing the value of n which is 5 initially. If you increment it you will get 6. Now these operators are basically called as shorthand operators or this is called as increment operator. Uh, we can also use decrement operator. So when you say n minus minus that's a decrement operator. So if you run this code now you can see we got 4. So from 5 we got 4 that's decrement. Now since we know about n++, let me just add some twist here. Let's say we have n++ in the same way we have plus plus n. So we can either write n++ or we can write plus plus n. The output is same. You will be getting 6. But then when you have two operators which are same, which are giving you the same output, why we need, why we need two operators? It's just, just that the, the output now we are getting is same, right? But there is one difference here. The difference is the plus plus n is called as pre-increment and n plus plus it is called as post-increment. So plus plus n is called as pre-increment and n plus plus is called as post-increment. Now what's the difference between that? So let me say I don't want to print n, I want to print m now. So the value of m we have of course 4, right? So there is no impact on m because of n. So the value of m initially was 4 and now it is 4. But let's say if I say m equal to n now, let me just comment these two lines there. So if I say m equal to n, the value of n which is 5, so the value of n is assigned to m. But what if I say plus plus n is pre-increment, it means first it will increment the value. So initially it will increment the value and later it will assign the value. The value of m, so the value of n becomes 6 now, so plus first, first of all it will increment the value and then it will assign. So the value of m will become 6 now and you can see we got 6. But what about if I say n++? Now what will happen is since it is post increment it will first assign the value and then it will increment. And that's why the so the when you assign the value the initial value of n is 5 when you assign the value to m it will be 5. So value of m will be 5 and you can run this, run this code we got 5. But that doesn't mean that n is not incrementing. Let me just print both the lines here, both the statement. I want to even print n now. So I'm printing m and n. And if I run this code, you can see the value of m is 5, the value as n is 6. n is getting incremented, but the problem is when m is equal to n plus plus, it means if first it will assign the value and then it will increment. But when you say plus plus n, it will first increment the value since it is pre-increment which is 6 initially and n will become 6 and that, is, that value will, will be assigned to m and we got 6. So that's how we can use shorthand op operators. We can use n++, we can use n minus minus, those all comes under increment or decrement. So you can do some extra stuff with this, you can practice your own codes, try out different combinations and check what answer you're getting. So that's it from this video, in the next video we'll talk about bitwise operator.